Philippines through the eyes of Antonio Pegasetti, Ferdinand Magellan's chronicle. Let us rediscover who we are by who our ancestors were. For our history. For our dignity. For our pride. This is the factual written account of Antonio Pigafetta when Fernal de Magalhães, also known as Ferdinand Magellan, also known as Fernando de Magallanes, a Portuguese sailing under the Spanish flag, first encountered the Filipino people. Here we will listen to the first impressions of explorers and their actuations towards our own people. We will not inject our own opinions, viewpoint, and judgment, and we will leave it to the people who will watch this as to how our Filipino ancestors were. Antonio Pigafetta, according to Wikipedia, was an Italian scholar and explorer from the Republic of Venice. He traveled with a Portuguese explorer, Ferdinand Magellan, and his crew by order of the King Charles I of Spain on their voyage around the world. During the expedition, he served as Magellan's assistant and kept an accurate journal which later assisted him in translating the Cebuano language. It is the first recorded document concerning the language. Pigafetta was one of the 18 men who returned to Spain in 1522. Out of the approximately 240 who set out three years earlier, the voyage completed the first circumnavigation of the world. Juan Sebastian Elcano had served as captain after Magellan's death during the voyage in 1521 in the Philippines. Picafeta's surviving journal is the source for much of what is known about Magellan and Elcano's voyage. March 16, 1521, Saturday. There was a highland we encountered named Zamal. This island is 300 leguas away from the islands of Ladroni. Those three islands were named Ladroni because the people there are poor, innovative, and very thievish. March 17, Sunday. The Captain General landed on an unsettled island which is to the right of Zamal for security and rest and water. He put up two tents on the shore and killed the swine for them. March 18, 1521, Monday. A boat with nine men on it approached us. So the Captain General ordered that no one should move or say a word without his permission. Their chief met our general captain and signaled that they were happy because we arrived. Five of their most ornately adorned waited with us while the others fetched the others who were fishing. The captain general ordered food to be set before them once the captain general regarded them as rational men. We exchanged red caps, mirrors, combs, bells, ivory, mocassin, and other things with them. In exchange with the captain's courtesy, they exchanged fish, uraka or arak, which is a jar of palm wine, bananas, one palm long and other which were smaller and more delicate, and two coconuts, for they have brought nothing else with them. However, they made signs with their hands that they will come back within four days to bring us umai or rice and many more food. To explain the kind of fruits above named, it must be known that the one which they call kuchi is the fruit which the palm trees bear. And as we have bread, 
wine, oil, and vinegar proceeding from different kinds, so these people have those things proceeding from these palm trees only. It must be said that the wine proceeds from the said palm trees in the following manner. They make a hole at the summit of the tree as far as its heart, which is named palmito, from which a liquor comes out in drops down the tree, like white must, which is sweet but with somewhat of bitter. They have canes as thick as the leg, in which they draw off this liquor, and they fasten them to the tree from the evening till next morning. And from the morning to the evening, because this liquor comes little by little. This palm produces a fruit named pocho, which is as large as the head, or thereabouts. Its first husk is green and two fingers in thickness. In it, they find certain threads with which they make the cords for fastening their boats. Under this husk, there is another very hard and thicker than that of a walnut. They burn this second rind and make with it a powder which is useful to them. Under this rind, there is a white marrow of a finger's thickness which they eat fresh with meat and fish as we do bread and it has the taste of an almond and if anyone dried it, he might make bread out of it. From the middle of this marrow, there comes out a clear sweet water and very cordial which when it has rested a little and settled, congeals and becomes like an apple. When they wish to make oil, they take this fruit, the cocoa, and let it get rotten. And they corrupt this marrow in the water. Then they boil it, and it becomes oil in the manner of butter. When they want to make vinegar, they let the water in the coconut get bad, and they put it in the sun. When it turns to vinegar like white wine, from this fruit milk also can be made, as we experienced, for we scrape this marrow and then put it with its water, and passed it through a cloth, and thus it was milk like that of goats. This kind of palm tree is like the date palm, but not so rugged. Two of these trees can maintain a family of ten persons, but they do not draw wine, as above mentioned, always from one tree, but draw from one for eight days, and from the other as long. For if they did not, otherwise, the trees would dry up. In this manner, they last a hundred years. Those people became very familiar with us. They told us many things, their names, and those of some of the islands that could be seen from that place. Their own island was called Zuluan, and it is not very large. We took great pleasure with them, for they were very pleasant and conversable. In order to show them greater honor, the Captain General took them to his ship and showed them all his merchandise of cloves, cinnamon, pepper, ginger, nutmeg, mace, gold, and all things in the ship. He had some mortars fired for them, whereat they exhibited great fear and tried to jump out of the ship. They made signs to us that the above said articles grew in that place where we were going. When they were about to retire, they took their leave very gracefully and neatly, saying that they would return according to their promise. The island where we were is called Humunu, but inasmuch as we found two springs there of the clearest water, we called it Aquada Dalibuni Senyale, that is, the watering place of good signs. For there were the first signs of gold which we found in those districts. We found a great quantity of white coral there, and large trees 
with fruit a trifle smaller than the almond and resembling pine seeds. There are also many palms, some of them good and others bad. There are many islands in that district and therefore we call them the archipelago of San Lazaro as they were discovered on the Sabbath of Saint Lazarus. Sa mga pag-ari ko, madakala salamat, serakan. Maraming salamat po, madamo, gin nga salamat. Daghang salamat, agyamanak. Shukran, rak, gin nga salamat. Thank you so much for watching. Please wait for the next series. Meanwhile, please like and subscribe and comment to further enhance our knowledge. This narration is from the first voyage round the world by Antonio Pigafetta, translated by Lord Stanley of Alderney, Pigafetta's account of Magellan's voyage.